Why the 2005 Pride and Prejudice is better than the 95 BBC version, part four. Mr. Collins, you creepy bastard. Put some respect on Tom Hollander's name. If you haven't seen About Time, throw your phone in the trash and go watch that. Just trust me, please. This is the dinner scene. It's extremely similar, but there are just some subtle differences I wanted to highlight. Has she any family? Oh, she has one daughter. Alright, so here are the four things that I want to focus on. Cinematography, the performances, the focus or POV of the scene, and text versus subtext. And by that means, as I told Lady Catherine myself one day, she has deprived the British court of its brightest ornament. You may imagine, sir, how happy I am on every occasion to offer those little delicate compliments which are always acceptable to ladies. <laughs> it is fortunate for you, Mr. Collins, that you possess such an extraordinary talent for flattering with delicacy. Uh, may I ask, whether these pleasing attentions proceed from the impulse of the moment or are they the result of previous study? They arise chiefly from what is passing at the time, sir. I do sometimes amuse myself by writing down and arranging such little compliments as may be adapted to ordinary occasions. <laughs> but I try to get them as unstudied and that as possible. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. No, oh, Jane, you're in trouble. All right, on to 05. Does she have any family? One daughter. The heiress of Rosie is in very extensive property. I've often observed to Lady Catherine that her daughter seemed born to be a duchess, for she has all the superior graces of elevated rank. These are the kind of little delicate compliments which are always acceptable to the ladies and which I conceive myself particularly bound to pay. How happy for you, Mr. Collins, to possess the talent for flattering with such delicacy. These pleasing attentions proceed from the impulse of the moment, or are they the result of previous study? They arise chiefly from what is passing at the time, and though I do sometimes amuse myself with arranging such little elegant compliments, I always wish to give them as unstudied an air as possible. Oh. Believe me, no one would suspect your manners to be rehearsed. <coughs> After dinner, I thought I might read to you all for an hour or two. This I find relatable. I, I always try to do this with my sons. friends and they don't let me do it. You speak very eloquently on all matters moral. Are you familiar with Fordyce's sermons, Miss Bennett? 